Welcome back to A Little Too Quiet, the Ferndale Library podcast, brought to you by the friends of the Ferndale Library. Coming to you live in Ferndale, Michigan, a mile north of Detroit. My name's Jeff Milo, joined here as always by my producer, Kelly Bennett. And today's guest is the head reference librarian of this library, Ed Burns. We're going to be talking about collection development. We're going to be talking about movies. We're going to be talking about DVDs. We're going to be talking about... Well, we're going to be talking about the friends of the Ferndale Library, too. We mentioned them a lot on this podcast, and he is the liaison to that group. Ed, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. It's it's great to have you here. Now, I have to tell you, Ed, I've never told you this, and this might sound like a strange compliment, but I was here in the late 90s when you were volunteering, and before someone told me that you were a volunteer, I thought, that guy looks like a librarian. <laughs> <laughs> You already did when I first met you. Um, can you talk about how you came onto this path to becoming a librarian? Uh, I'm not sure exactly. I always spent a lot of time in libraries when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. I always had great admiration for librarians. It just seemed to me like they always knew where to find the answer to yeah. a question. And I used librarians a lot when I was in um, school to help me find the answers for things. When I was a teenager, I especially used libraries a lot and got access to books and music that I wouldn't have had access to otherwise. Mm -hmm. So I always kind of had it in the back of my head that it would be a neat thing to be a librarian. And then when I was 49, I had been volunteering here for about seven years or so. I had been the president of the Friends Group for a while. And I was in a job that I knew that I had to leave, and I thought this would be a good time to go back to school, Mm -hmm. get a library degree, and I knew I had a foot in the door here, and I thought I had something to offer, Mm -hmm. and so... You looked in your element. I remember vividly observing you when you (laughs) came in to volunteer. It was funny. The way that I started volunteering, I called and I talked to Darla, who was the head of reference here at the time, and I asked if she had any volunteer opportunities, and she said, the only thing we have is shelf reading. And I said, what is that? She told me what that is, that just going book by book, making sure it's in order. She said, it's very tedious. But noble. She said, it's very tedious. And I said, well, it needs to be done, right? She said, right. And I said, all right, I'm in. Yeah. And I found it, um, I really enjoyed doing it. I wouldn't want to do it all day, every day. Of course. But it's kind of a neat thing to just sort of get lost in for a while. And then it just kind of took off from there, and here I am. Yeah. But let's talk about one of your passions, which is which is movies. I think li- librarians, when people think of librarians, they immediately think of books, a bound book, pages, etc. Mm-hmm. But we overlook that libraries carry massive collections of DVDs, and you've been a key part of assuring we have one, a great collection here. Thank you. Yeah, I've uh, always had a passion for movies ever since I was a kid. I just have always watched a lot of movies. I shouldn't say, I, well, because at this point in my life, I'm really not. But uh, up to a few years ago, a great deal of my life was spent watching movies. And I particularly like foreign movies and independent movies, the more offbeat fare, which um, when I first started working here, found that aspect of cinema was lacking mm-hmm. in our collection, Mm -hmm. foreign films in particular, we had zero. And I thought that uh, that would be a good thing that I could contribute to the library, so. Uh, The director, uh, Bong Joon-ho, had a great quote at the Golden Globes, I don't know if you saw it, but he said that he's hoping American audiences can get past the one inch barrier of subtitles (laughs) to discover worlds and treasures, so. Well, I've always, once I started seeing foreign films and getting into them when I was a teenager, I found that once you're into it, the subtitles really aren't a distraction. Yeah. And I I told this story when I was at MLA doing the conference. The first foreign language film that I really got into was a movie called King of Hearts, which is from 1966. It's a French film, an anti-war film with uh, Alan Bates and Jean-Vierre Bougeot, and it used to play on a double bill with Harold and Maude a lot back in the 70s and early 80s. And I would go and see these movies any time that I had the opportunity to see them. 
And one time I went to a showing where they had a dubbed version of King of Hearts, and it was not the same experience. Mm. I, I can't tell you that I knew the movie word for word, but I knew it well enough to know that some of the things that I was hearing were not the things I had read, and the voices were different, the expressions, mm. the inflections. And from that point on, I turned my nose up at dubbed movies, <laughs> and I, I got, uh, I was, a, I've always been a big advocate of watching subtitled movies since then. King of Hearts, mm -hmm. that's a blind spot for me. Is it similar to Harold Maude at all, like plot and narrative? Uh, no. Okay. Okay. No, it's They're not. just were paired together. They were just okay. were paired together, and if you were really lucky, mm -hmm. there were uh, two shorts that they used to show sometimes. Mm -hmm. One was called um, "Who Was That Masked Man," mm -hmm. which was actually a stand-up routine by Lenny Bruce, oh, wow. which they had made a cartoon out of with the Lone Ranger and Tonto, and it's very politically incorrect and very very funny. Oh my gosh! And then there was another <laughs> short called "Godzilla Meets Bambi." <laughs> which I can't tell you anything about without spoiling it, but you can find it on YouTube. It's uh, only about a minute long. You used to work in a theater. I did. Yeah, I, I just love that image of that, especially being a spark for your love of cinema. Yeah, I started, uh, I think I was 16 mm -hmm. when I started working. There were two, at that time, there were two movie theaters in Birmingham, which is where I was living. One was called the Birmingham and one was called the Bloomfield. They were right uh, down the street from each other. And most of my circle of friends in high school ended up working at the Bloomfield <laughs> Theater. So we would, you know, hang out together at school and then hang out together at work. That at sounds night. terrific. And uh, it was terrific. It was it was a fun time. And you probably but got to see some different. good movies. I saw some good movies and I saw some bad movies and sure. I saw some movies that to this day I, I can't bear the thought of because <laughs> I saw them or heard them over and over and over again. Oh, no. But the flip side of that is there are some movies, for instance, um, What's Up Doc, which is a comedy directed by Peter Bogdanovich, uh, starring Barbara Streisand and Ryan O'Neill, that I saw over and over and over again. And I watched it again about three years ago, and I still laughed out loud. Oh, that's great. That's mm -hmm. great. And I got to say, I came, just my personal anecdote, coming into this library, uh, when I started working here, I was fresh out of somewhat fresh out of college where I had a minor in film studies and I was taking lots of <laughs> film courses. And lo and behold, uh, whether Ed was aware of it or not, he was curating this collection, which was just a film student's dream. It had all of the foreign films, especially a lot from the 40s, all those Italian neorealism, and then a lot from the 70s. It's like those are the literal bread and butter <laughs> of film <laughs> students. <laughs> 70s cinema is, I mean, I can't say enough about it. What a what a period of time for creativity. If I were left to my own, I would probably watch very little except for 70s movies. Yeah. There were movies that I would go back and watch over and over again, um, mm -hmm. like The Last Picture Show, another Peter Bogdanovich movie, which just, it just gets better every time you watch it. Yeah. And um, like Jack Nicholson movies before he became a big star mm -hmm. with uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. He yeah. gave some really fine performances in like The Last Detail, which is kind of um, like a little or known movie of his, Five Easy Pieces. So, yeah, there was a lot. There are quite a few. In fact, I did a, a film series here several years ago called Ung San Greats of the 70s mm -hmm. that I, I showed like four or five different movies from the 70s that I thought never got the appreciation that they deserve. So, yeah, I we can, have them all in our collection. I now. can vouch for Last Detail. Ed turned me on to it. Randy Quaid's in there, young mm -hmm. Randy Quaid. Randy Quaid, Carol Kane. Mm -hmm. Another one I have to owe to uh, Ed is turning me on to Robert Altman. Yes. Mm -hmm. There is a country music film that Nashville, he did that you especially love. Which I have said many times, I think uh, Nashville should be required viewing for yeah. every aspiring film director. Yeah, of course. Now, you mentioned MLA, which is the Michigan Library Association annual conference. You right. just did a presentation there recently. Yes. And that was sort of all about collection development with films. Can you talk a bit it about that? It was primarily about collecting foreign language and art house mm -hmm. films. Mm -hmm. uh, because everybody you know, who's buying the movies pretty much you know, knows the mainstream stuff. You just go through the catalog and you know you order whatever Tom Hanks is in and whatever superhero movie is coming <laughs> out. And, uh, 
But uh, trying to find, you know, like the really good foreign films and indie films that, that uh, have gotten some acclaim and that you think will have an audience at your library, it's a little more, a little more difficult, mm -hmm. but more rewarding to me. Yeah. So, so yes, I did do a presentation about how I started our foreign film collection from nothing, right? And then um, what it's what it's grown into. So. That's got to be rewarding, though, because I mean, it's easy to get the superhero movies and the Tom Hanks movies. Mm -hmm. It's you're you're turning on the community to something. You're you're trying. You're giving them a spoonful of something and say you might. This might look weird, but try it. <laughs> well, there is an audience for it, and part of the audience is people that come in and will just take anything off the shelf that mm -hmm. they haven't seen before, and I know that we have a lot of those people. But uh, there was a guy, I was sitting on the reference desk a couple months ago, and somebody called asking about this movie, and now I'm not going to remember the, the title. It's White Something, uh, but it's a foreign film. He was calling from Auburn Hills, wanted to know if he could check out the movie with his Auburn Hills card. I said, yes, he could. So I pulled it for him. So he was somebody who drove 20 miles to pick up a movie and 20 miles back home again because he really wanted to watch this movie. So, so there's very definitely an audience Agreed. for these things. I can tell you, um, and I work at the circulation desk too, that I've um, sold a non-resident card to a guy based solely on the fact that we have a lot of films that are of interest to, you know, LGBTQ people. And that's all he checks out. He mm -hmm. goes over to the self-check and he's got, you know, all of those and he's like delighted and he's just working his way through the whole collection. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that guy paid to be a part of this library from another community because of our movie collection. Right. Nice. Right. right. Thank you for telling me that. Yeah. And uh, you're also uh, keen to keep the uh, collection full of good criterion titles. Yes. You know? So which is and we just got uh, a, a huge edition of that didn't we we did uh, about well several months ago yes yeah. uh, we got uh, about 40 new criteria actually 39 because the 40th one was out of print <laughs> but uh, 39 <laughs> new criterion movies and i've bought uh, another like dozen or so since then mm -hmm. and that's so, from yeah. great directors francois truffaut jean renoir just great stuff. And just all sorts of genres and all sorts mm -hmm. of eras. Like there, there's a movie from, I think the late, I, I want to say 1939 called Only Angels Have Wings. It's got Cary Grant, Jean Arthur, who is my favorite actress, Rita Hayworth. Uh, it was directed by Howard Hawks. I mean, how can you beat that? But quite, quite most a pedigree. people don't know about that movie. And uh, Criterion printed out. And so we've got it on our shelf now. Quite so. a pedigree. Cary Grant, my favorite actor. He's one of mine, too. But I wanted to venture a guess as I'm doing some research. That gentleman who drove 20 miles, was it for a film called The White Ribbon, which is possibly a German film from no, 2009? No, it was uh, a movie that just came out last year on DVD. Okay, well, we'll keep guessing. Yeah. <laughs> but, but speaking of, you know, so obviously foreign films, LGBTQ, you also are keen to keep Criterion indie films. You've got uh, a horror genre to look after. It's mm. it's quite a task to mm -hmm. keep all this going year in, year out. But uh, definitely, definitely rewarding, it sounds like. It definitely is rewarding to me. We mentioned the importance of keeping foreign films. Obviously, there are a lot of uh, classics from the 40s. But there are contemporary foreign directors, uh, international directors, we should say. Of course, we should mention Pedro. Pedro Almodovar. Almodovar. A, uh, 90s, 2000s, 80s, 90s, but still a contemporary, still still yeah. really creating some interesting work. Yeah, One and his favorites. latest movie, in fact, is probably going to get nominated for an Oscar this year for, mm -hmm. uh, I was going to say the best foreign language film, but they've changed the name of the category. They're calling it uh, international film mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. but it still has to be primarily in a foreign language. But case in point, so. there's still just dynamic work being done every year. Yeah, he's uh, he's one of my favorites. There's also um, a guy named Xavier Dolan, who's French-Canadian, who wrote, directed, produced, and starred in his first movie when he was like uh, 20 years old. And mm. uh, it won an award at Cannes. That's great. So it was called I Killed My Mother. <laughs> and uh, I buy everything that he makes. I think he's a very interesting director. That was a whole other part that kind of played into your presentation is keeping an eye on the awards. You keep a watch on what what's getting awards. I do. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which is like, uh, if it's not Cannes, there's Sundance, and there's so many that you're keeping track of. 
Well, there were three. Uh, well, the like I was, there were three awards film festivals i should say that have been around forever the berlin film festival and venice film festival and Cannes film festival Mm -hmm. and i'll buy anything that wins any award at one of those Mm -hmm. and i'll pretty much buy anything that wins an award at sundance but there are some other film festivals that i'm starting to watch more too the tribeca Mm -hmm. and south by southwest is an interesting one i did want to pick your brain a little bit about just since the uh, Oscars are coming up soon. I remember a conversation I had with you and you turned me on to a film that I needed to watch. It was called Ed Wood by yes. Tim Burton. And we were talking about the 1994 Academy Awards. Mm-hmm. I mean, whenever the Oscars come around, whether or not you're keeping track of them or not, you can always talk about all time great snubs. Any thoughts mm-hmm. to share on that film? Yeah. Or Oscar snubs? I got to tell you, I don't really think in terms of snubs because because yeah. it is all subjective. And, uh, you know, there are only five nominees in each category. And uh, so I don't really I don't really buy into the word snub so mm-hmm. much. There are numerous things I can point to that uh, should have turned out differently in my mind than they did. Mm -hmm. And one of them is I think that Ed Wood should have won every Oscar that Forrest Gump won that year. Agreed. And I feel very strongly about (laughs) it. (laughs) And Johnny Depp wasn't even nominated. That's incredible. And it's a fantastic performance. And in fact, Ed Wood wasn't nominated for Best Movie. And Mm -hmm. it's a... It's a wonderful movie. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's a wonderful movie for people who love film because it's about somebody who really loved making movies, who just really loved film. And Ed Wood is widely considered one of the worst filmmakers of all time. Mm -hmm. But he had a genuine love and a genuine passion for it. Oh, yeah. And that really comes across in Tim Burton's movie. Yeah, absolutely. The passion is is captured. Mm -hmm. But I I guess, I don't know, maybe people just think maybe in 1994 they weren't ready to take Tim Burton seriously. I don't know. But the one thing they did get right was giving the Oscar to Martin Landau. That's one Mm -hmm. of the all-time best screen performances, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Martin Landau is Bela Lugosi. Yeah. Well, I think it's, uh, on a closing note, I think it's important to emphasize that there are lots of options out there to get movies, but there are so many movies in this library, and in a lot of libraries, that you're not going to be able to find, Mm -hmm. potentially, out there in the Netflix world. Angels Wear White? A Chinese film? No. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> was it hold on was it ash's purest white yes i win yes. i win i just heard about that one recently yep that was it <laughs> been hearing great things about that film and it's so cool to hear we already have it yes we do well ed it's been it's been a pleasure to talk with you i thought it was very important to mention that we have an, an amazing growing movie collection here you're also, before we let you go, the liaison to the Friends of the Ferndale Library. Yes, I am. We should talk a bit about that organization because they made this podcast a reality. Can you talk about what they do and what you enjoy most about being involved with them? Uh, the Friends of the Ferndale Library, their mission is to advocate for the library, to do fundraising, and um, the group that we have right now just does a really fine job. They're very enthusiastic about what they're doing. They're creative. They enjoy being together. It's uh, I go to the meetings once a month, and it's like a group of friends just hanging out, having a good time. And they operate the bookstore, which is a big source of revenue. And with the money that's come in from that, they've been able to purchase a lot of things for us, including the equipment for this podcast. They're always happy to see new people. There are always volunteer opportunities. They have different events that they put on throughout the year. If you ever want to come and have some fun and meet some really nice people and help out the library, we would be happy to see you. Uh, Our meetings are on the second Monday of the month at 6.30 p.m. right here at the Ferndale Area District Library. We can't say how, Kelly can attest to this, how thankful we are that we have a very supportive and active friends group they also help make the concert series Mm -hmm. a reality yeah Yeah, and over the years you know it's grown it's changed but the core is that it's people who love the library and want to lend a hand you know you started out as a friend ed and Mm -hmm. um, we've just seen so many amazing things the great 
cake off was a wonderful event we've had oh my gosh so many cakes in the library <laughs> yeah we had a miniature golf course set up in the library a couple of times on uh, when we were still closed on sundays and that was a that was a fun event people could come in we had it during the winter time so it was sort of like an outdoor activity that mm -hmm. uh, we had going on indoors. Mm -hmm. so and, uh, you know, going with our library's rock kind of theme and our edgy library sort of theme, every festival that takes over the city, the friends will have a booth and, mm -hmm. you know, pour beer or right. serve beer for tips. And those tips help out the library's programming as well. So that's like you know, be a bartender for two hours and mm -hmm. help the library out. Yeah. And if anyone's listening to this podcast and that we're not your home library and your library doesn't have a friends organization or your library's friends organization isn't active enough, you could join right now, right? They, they're empowered to get involved right now. So, <laughs> so that's exciting. And on a closing note, it, I think, you know, we have to always have to remember that the movies that we all really treasure going back to those Oscars, it doesn't matter if they get the statues or not. The ones that really reach us are going to stick with us forever. Yes. Yeah. Ed, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much for being here today. You're welcome. This has been a fun little chat about movies and collection development and an emphasis on the love that we get from the friends of the Ferndale Library who made this podcast a reality. It's called A Little Too Quiet. We started a podcast because we thought perceptions of libraries were something of a little too quiet. So we've got more of this first season coming along. If you want to find out more about the Friends of the Ferndale Library, you can go to ferndalefriends.org where you can join or donate. If you're listening to us out there on the streaming platforms like Apple Podcasts, please leave us a review so we can start finding some more listeners out there. My name is Jeff Milo. Reference librarian, head of adult services, Ed Burns has been here. The man who made uh, our movie collection so, so, so spectacular. And Kelly Bennett, the producer, has been here as well. Tune in again next time. More to come. This is a little too quiet. <laughs>